Good evening, everybody. Atma Namaste. No, no. He's okay. Yes. Afternoon. Okay. Okay. I'll get that thing. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Atma Namaste. Are we there? We're there. <laughs> Welcome to chapter 18. We shall be mesmerized. I was mesmerized reading this chapter. <laughs> it's a good chapter to kind of just read through and then probably go to sleep also. Anyways, uh, Let's start with the prayer. We are at six thirty three. Okay, let's close our eyes, connect down to the palate, inhale and exhale. Being a being aware of why we're all gathered here together. Let's feel ourselves in the presence of God in all his wisdom and all his light to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokok, Sri Lord Maha Guruji Mele, to all the great ones, to all the Holy Masters, Holy Guru, especially the great teachers and beings of theosophy, to the great beings of knowledge, light and wisdom, to the angels and beings of communication, of our respective internet and Wi-Fi, to our soul and divine self. We humbly invoke for your great, great blessings, for your tremendous light, for your love, for your mercy, for your tremendous patience with all of us. We ask you to help us to have a deeper, clearer understanding of these priceless teachings, so we may become better instruments, healing instruments to help others and to make this world a better place. Today, we offer ourselves as instruments to do your work. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. You may slowly open your eyes with a smile. Atma Namaste. Welcome everybody to the session. We continue with uh, the chapter, right? And so we are talking basically about mesmerism and hypnotism. And so they uh, go on to say that hypnotism, hyp hypnos, basically means sleep, right? And so they are basically talking about the art of putting someone to sleep. Uh, they haven't mentioned much about what they actually do. However, they've said that the result is basically something happening with the uh, nerves, right? The paralysis of the, the nerves, especially the one uh, that is associated with the eye, right? Or some other method and they have not told us what that is. Then it says that uh, this is not an injurious state. However, it can turn out bad or good. So I'm not sure what can turn out bad or good, but at the same time be safe. <laughs> so uh, that's not clear here either. And then it goes on to say uh, that when a person is in this state of hypnotism, they do not experience any pain. Maybe it means can be misused or used for good. And use for you mean by people who know how to use hypnotism? Yeah, yeah I guess so. Maybe it's got to do with uh, the use of it. Either could be used for good or for bad. All right. Now, coming back to what they're talking about it, there is uh, insensitivity to pain for a person. And they say maybe this is a good thing because at that point, uh, the system, the physical system actually gets some rest. Right. And then it goes on to say um, that it could be beneficial in certain cases. Right. And then it says uh, it is primarily a self-induced condition. Its main result is that it usually places the subject to a greater or lesser extent under the control of an operator or the hypnotist. Yes. And so the hypnotist is able to then uh, give commands that this subject will then automatically follow. And then they go on to tell you how this actually happens a little later. Anyway, to, uh, to move on, they say that uh, now the control that the person has, the hypnotist has over the subject is uh, only to a certain extent, right? which varies accordingly to the nature and character of the subject, 
right? And so they usually try to get a very uh, docile subject, not a very hard-headed one, right? And uh, also, of course, the hypno hypnotist, you know, his level of power and skill <coughs> and his ability to um, use uh, his technique on another, right? Uh, so uh, it, it is basically depending on these two, the subject's uh, ability, the character and the nature, and secondly, the skill and the power of the operator. These are the two things that go in hypnotism. So moving on to the next one. So when we talk about mesmerism, they say this depends upon quite a different principle. And this was brought, by, uh, brought about by a doctor in Vienna called Dr. Frederick uh, Mesmer. Yes, and so the name comes from him. Now, what he realized somewhere uh, during his practices in the 18th century, he realized that he was able to cure people using his hands, right? And uh, he realized that something was happening and interestingly he gave the name, I don't even know why he would give it animal magnetism. Anyway, it's coming from a human. So <laughs> uh, the name given at that point was animal magnetism. And then I think Amit mentioned about him leaving uh, Austria and then going to France. And then anyway, it didn't work out for him. That's what you mentioned in the court. Correct, in the court, yeah. And so it goes on to say here that the essence of mesmerism is that the, uh, in this case, the doctor, right? The operator drives out the force, right? The, the fluidic force uh, or the vital fluid from a certain part. And while he do, does this, he replaces it with his own. Now, this is different from what we were talking about earlier, where you're just passing your hand over the part and, you know, removing the energy. So they say that this person is able to then um, take out the energy from the patient and then put his own. The natural effect of this is that the patient loses all power of feeling. Now, we know that, for example, when we do Master Joe's Prana healing, our patient doesn't lose any kind of sensation, doesn't lose anything. So here, something else is actually happening, right? So we'll go into that in a bit as well. So it says that the patient loses the power of feeling in that portion, yes, where the operator, or in this case, the doctor was able to pull out the vital fluid. And, say, and then he was able to transmit his own fluid into that part, right? His energy, I would presume. And so it says, we have previously seen that the power of feeling depends on the transmission of contact. Remember, this is something we've learned earlier. The contacts to the astral centers. So that's very, very essential to be able to especially feel pain and things like that. You need that connection, that communication happening through the etheric body between the astral and the physical. And so it says, so we have to remember that this transmission happens through and uh, through the astral center, through the matter of the etheric double, which we just mentioned. When therefore the etheric matter is removed. So remember there's the dense body and there's the astral body, right? And this etheric body is the one that kind of communicates back and forth. But if this etheric body is removed and there's no communication, one of the reasons why they, uh, they don't feel pain, all right? And so it says here that the etheric ma uh, matter is then removed and the connection between the dense physical body, which I just mentioned, and the astral body is broken, right, temporarily. And consequently, there can be no sensation, no sensation at all, right? So basically what they're saying is the withdrawal of the vital fluids does not in any way interfere with the other normal system of the dense body, right? So nothing happens to your blood circulatory system um, that everything else is okay and the body remains warm. It is alive. It's not dead because uh, the etheric body in that part is removed, right? So nothing really happens. So you don't have to worry about it, but we need to understand that the etheric body in that portion or that part has been removed, right? Uh, so I'm going to do one more paragraph and then I'll hand it over to Amit, yeah? So, so moving on and it says, it is thus possible to drive out of the patient's own, eth own etheric matter form say from an arm or a leg of the patient. And so uh, it's almost like that entire leg is under anesthesia, yes? And so what happens is the mesmerism process being in such a case purely local, the patient will, will regain full normal consciousness in his, in the brain. All that happens is that a local anesthetic has been applied in the limb concerned. Under such mesmeristic, 
anesthetic surgical operations, both minor and major were then done. So since these, there, there are a couple of other doctors also who used it, right? And so what they were able to do is, because they were able to remove, say for example, the person had an issue with their abdominal region, say the intestine, they were able to move the etheric matter out of that, almost numb that, because at that, at that time, chloroform was not yet discovered, right? So in order to reduce the pain of surgery, they were able to remove the etheric part of the body, yes, from that portion where the intestine is, and they were able to operate. And because there was no pain, they were able to do whatever they had to, stitch up the person, and then probably then bring the energy back. And so they say that Dr. Um, what's the guy from India? Yeah, so there is a book, they say, there's a record of this called The Mesmerism in India, first published in 1842 by Dr. S. As they are, as they are. I don't know. I'm not sure uh, from SDL, which I, would I wouldn't know how to say that. Right. Then. So this is by a doctor who's written this. And then there's another surgeon called Dr. Elliotson. 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 But they spell it very differently. Oh, okay. Elliotson. Um, also performs such operations um, in London three quarters of a century ago. Uh, again, as I mentioned here, chloroform was not yet discovered. And so I can imagine other doctors. Can you imagine going for surgery in 1840s, right? If you really need a surgery, you're going to be screaming and shouting, but the doctors will just be holding you probably, opening that part and doing whatever is required, right? No anesthesia, no chloroform, nothing. So um, obviously at that time, this was an amazing way to try and help with the healing process of the physical body or the dense body. And so we can't say what was done was, was not okay. Uh, I'm talking about without <laughs> mesmerism, even normal surgery, it, it was required to save a person's uh, life. But having found this way of removing the etheric uh, body, right, from that part was truly uh, a discovery. Yes, at that point. All right, I'll give it to you. Mm. Uh, I already finished most of this. I yeah, think the, the first first two, uh, first two paragraphs. One and a half. Oh, even with the okay. the essence of mesmerism is the operator. Didn't I finish this? You didn't finish the whole thing. In some way half, and then you said it's too much to talk about. You need to talk about it. But I forgot what I was going to say that time. <laughs> now it's all coming to me. Anyway, so it's uh, all coming back to me now. <laughs> Go ahead. In pranic healing, I think Master ruled out this healing because he says healing conscious. Um, anyway, um, okay, we've already covered hypnosis and we've looked at uh, the founder, uh, Madame Blavatsky's explanation of how and the principle, how hypnosis happens and the principle behind hypnosis and how it's different from mesmerism. And mesmerism is basically healing, but what it looks like, mesmerism is basically healing, but by putting a person in a trance state. So you mesmerize someone, uh, so it's it's healing, but through trance, right? You put the person, that's why usually mesmerizing is, is a word used for singers. You know, the voice was so mesmerizing. You put me in a trance and also it's healing, right? Or even you, you, if, you don't know where you went, right? Or even it takes you two somewhere. people who are in love. They who say, are in love. You don't know where you, you go them. places, you know, so you're not conscious. Sorry. You know? So this is not anesthesia. Yeah. They're saying the feeling is something like that. Uh, so anesthesia is completely different. We're talking about medical anesthesia. Is the video is still stuck? Uh, anyway, it's, it's, no video. Oh. No, it's on. I can see it. No video? Still stuck? Hi. Okay, wait. Let me just turn it off. Bye. Can you see that? Okay, I'm on. Okay. And now, can you see us? Did we? Uh, I think we mesmer mesmerized the computer. <laughs> the computer has been mesmerized. You can't still see us. I can see yes, no. That's because we mesmerized you. <laughs> Don't you understand? <laughs> So Bindu says clear, the next person says no, then one says ha ha. <laughs> well, no means you can't see us, right? <laughs> they can hear us. Okay, this is an audio session. There's no video. 
As long as you can hear us, it's good enough, right? Is okay, there... now you can see. I'm frozen. <coughs> oh my God. How come? <laughs> Maybe it's the Wi Fi. <coughs> I'm laughing too much. Okay. Okay, I'll just I'll just talk and we'll see if it resumes. I don't know what's happening. It doesn't. It's show okay. We look here. the same, so don't worry about it. Just yeah. listen to we'll, it. It's we'll, more important. Okay. Anyway, I forgot again. Anyway, so it's basically uh, I think healing with the trans based on what I understand. Hypnosis from outside in and mesmerism is from inside out, and it goes into all these things. Mm. Um, now the natural effect. What does it say here? It. Um, it, the essence of mesmerism is that the operator drives out or forces back, like pushes back, uh, the patient's own magnetism or vital fluid. Okay. Now, I don't think they're talking about physical fluid. I think they're talking about probably energy fluid, not blood, right? So, and replaces it with his own fluid. Now, if they're talking about blood, then obviously <laughs> there's a transfusion happening. Um, but um, you see, I got that. I got that because disturbed audio. Okay, can you hear us now? Is it okay? Yay, nay. Okay, so I got this, okay? Because if you've done pranic healing, okay, if you've done pranic healing, the essence of pranic healing is basically that we remove the vital fluid that we don't need, all right? And we replace it with our own vital fluid, <laughs> all right? It sounds a little gross now that I'm putting it that way. Take off the video to reduce the vital Go ahead. Uh, okay, we switched off the video for a bit, so. Um, so the essence of pranic healing is basically, um, you remove the vital fluid. I don't know, do we draw back the vital fluid sometimes? We don't force back the vital fluid. We force around the vital fluid sometimes, okay? We, when we're transmuting or something like that, we, uh, or, uh, and we put in our own vital fluid. So on one level, they can be just talking about cleansing and energizing, taking out vital fluid and replacing it with your own vital fluid. It, pa it is your own because it passes through you, although you're getting it from outside. Okay. Uh, but the second part is a bit confusing. The natural effect of this is that the patient loses all power of feeling in that portion of his body from which his own fluid has been expelled. All right, now uh, we'd have to see how, what they're talking about. Uh, then that means they're not talking about only etheric, they're talking about, uh, like Sumi was mentioning the other parts as well. We have previously seen that the power of feeling depends, okay, this Sumi is covered. Um, when therefore the etheric matter is removed, the connection between the dense physical body and the astral body is broken, and consequently the no sensation experienced, right? Um, the withdrawal of the vital fluid does not in any way interfere with the circulation of blood for the portion of the body contains warmth. So basically what they're doing is um, they are working on, they'll talk about why it doesn't affect this, but basically I think they're moving away. Maybe they're withdrawing a certain portion of the uh, consciousness or the uh, soul's consciousness from the body out Okay, because it shouldn't, it shouldn't be only etheric for them to lose sensation. So they're, they're withdrawing the consciousness of the person out and uh, replacing it with, um, not replacing it at all actually, just withdrawing it out. Now when you do that, uh, there is a um, sort of, you don't, ex you don't feel anything, all right? And I've already given the example of Masuchua when he went for his uh, minor surgery on his finger. Um, and he would basically, the guy was doing the um, surgery on his finger without any anesthetic or without any uh, local anesthesia or anything. So he probably withdrew his consciousness to a certain extent and more, we cannot talk about what that was. Um, now, it is thus possible to drive out a patient's own etheric matter from, say, an arm or leg, so that complete anesthesia in the limb results. The mesmeric process is purely local, blah, 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 so uh, all the functions. So basically, you are moving even the soul's energy out, probably, 
But the lower self, the chakras, which has a consciousness of its own, which is why they're called devas in certain books, and the body, which has a consciousness of its own, it still functions. It still circulates the blood. It does its job. All right. Um, now, when they see the... Didn't it say somewhere the stopping of flow of vital fluid? Where was it? Stopping. Um, something like that. When the etheric matter is removed, yeah, right? Removed. removed, right? So that means there's no etheric matter there. Now, in pranic psychotherapy, we teach a technique called cutting cords. Okay. Um, and in that cord, the advanced technique is where you use certain etheric, uh, actually not etheric, but uh, uh, higher energy clips to block the flow of prana from one part to another part of the cord. So in essence, that part has no, um, th there's no uh, prana or etheric energy flowing through it. Actually, a mixture of etheric, emotional and mental energy flowing through that. And then we, we disconnect. Uh, maybe that's why we don't feel anything. I don't know. But that's the only part where we stop the flow of etheric energy. But you can experiment with this. Maybe uh, one time we can experiment in clipping parts of the body <laughs> and stopping the flow of it and then pinching it. Okay? Because the only part that I know where it doesn't affect is when we put something called shields. Because that interferes to a certain extent with the uh, physical impact. So when we put on something called an etheric shield, for example, or we put on uh, not even an astral shield, but we put on an etheric shield and we call it a body fit etheric shield, uh, if you make it, if you involve not the chakras that I mentioned in the book, an additional chakra or two, uh, the Shaolin method or the Marshall's method, and you hit yourself, even with the chakras in the book, and you pinch yourself, um, there is, uh, you know, a reduction in sensitivity to pain. Okay, so that's why certain martial artists they put this shield around their body, and I don't know. Now I'm thinking what that shield does because. Uh, when they put that shield around their body, um, usually they have a psychic hole or they've been practicing a long time and it's involving certain chakras to do with, a, uh, to, to do with a drawing in more uh, of a certain prana, like the earth prana, to make the shield strong. And what happens is um, they hit the person. You've seen these movies where they hit the person with a baseball bat on the back and they break the... You know, normally you hit a person with a baseball bat or a cricket bat the arms and legs would break. But if you see in movies or in certain, um, you know, in certain uh, martial arts exhibitions, I think Master Chua went, was going there, I think he was in Indonesia, he had seen it and then he was talking to us about it. Uh, these guys were just hitting them and the wood would break and nothing would happen to them. And what he's told us was the wood was actually breaking on the shield that they had created, a body fit shield. Um, breaking on the shield, not on their body. And one of his students would have, um, would, um, would talk to him about how he learned this from one of his teachers and how they start is they take a butterfly and obviously you can't start with making a shield all over your body that takes practice right so you take a butterfly you put it in your uh, palm you close your hand and then you create the shield that that special shield around your your palm and you break the uh, the the teacher will break the stick on your hand and then it, the stick is supposed to break on the shield and then you open your palm and the butterfly flies out, right? Obviously, in the first few times, the butterfly did not fly out. <laughs> okay, it's <laughs> practice time. <laughs> and the knuckles were hurting badly. Okay, but eventually, uh, the shield can be created. And I think in the Psychic Elements class, at least when I know Sumi teaches and when I teach, uh, we actually experiment with this uh, dullness of sensation. So now it's making me think about the mechanism behind that shield and what it has to do with mesmerism. Okay, so with the etheric body, with the etheric body, because we're talking about only the etheric. Because shield. if you make the astral shield and do that, <laughs> it doesn't work that way, right? So we had certain experiments done by Master Chua, where he would make certain shields, and there are various versions of it. So you see, these things have to be validated. So there are many things you know we don't want to talk about with our experiment. But during that experiment, um, Master Chua would ask uh, a, a lady, a, a, a lady to come, and he would ask a guy. And he would instruct her to make a shield. And uh, first, she, he would just hit her, right? Uh, with permission. <laughs> and um, it would be a little painful. And then he would say, okay, now box her stomach. You know, you know just you know, hit her. So, so she would hit. And 
she would be like, oh, there's less, you know, there's, it, it's okay, it's okay, right? Um, and then one time, Master Chua, he, I mean, after that, Master Chua wanted to experiment with it. So he says, okay, you hit me, let me see how it feels. So the guy came and he, wow, you know, this is a big guy. He punched Master Chua in the stomach, like, poof, all right? Like, uh, like in those old Batman movies, like, pow you know um in the stomach and then master is like oh it's it does sting but it's you know dissipates but the problem was he did not instruct the shield to transmute the energy so the energy when it hit him that you see it's uh transference of whatever you call it from from the physics point of view you're transferring you know whatever potential energy and kinetic energy blah 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 and this energy got diverted back into his hand the hand of the and person, the hand person got so affected and he's like it was like hitting a tree trunk and Masachua's stomach is quite uh, it was not like a tree trunk <laughs> okay, let's just put it at that so Masachua to actually heal him it took him nearly 10 minutes 15 minutes uh, for Masachua to heal that person's hand <laughs> he kept sweeping it uh, because it was affected okay so what they're doing I have no idea because I'm not a mesmerist but um, it does have something to do with probably etheric uh, energy and interrupting or uh, adjusting the flow of uh, etheric energy uh, into your body or regulating it at least. Yeah. Yep, okay. So you want to answer that? What? I... Uh, how devas are associated with the body, are we releasing them in mesmerism with DNA seven in Pumbaram essentially? No, 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 the chakras are called devas because they have consciousness. You see, your organs also have consciousness. For, for something to, uh, to be able to process, you see, you eat something, everything happens automatically. Everything is broken down and separated into proteins, carbohydrates, fats, uh, the waste is segregated. All that requires a certain degree of intelligence and programming. So because of that, they have this auto program and that is what we call uh, the consciousness. And uh, so that's why they say the chakras have consciousness. Uh, and in the old books, they didn't have the word consciousness, so they would call them devas. I mean, they're sort of alive or they're conscious. They're intelligent. Intelligence. And they have instructions that they can follow. Nothing to do with devas in Hinduism and stuff, probably. I don't know. I'm not <laughs> talking about it. Why oh. do you mention it? Yeah, All right. It. So the next process is interesting. So they, they're talking about the mesmer, mesmeric uh, process and they say uh, to push this further what they what they're talking about is from the patient's brain for example you take the energy of the patient's brain the etheric energy out and then you put the for, for example the operator's energy in and so what happens is when the operator has an instruction uh, that they want the uh, subject to follow because of the connection he or she will automatically follow all right so what they're saying is um, they drive out the subject's own magnetic fluid from the brain and replace it with that of the operator. In this case, the subject loses control of his own body and the control passes all over to the operator. Now, this is a little bit scary, you know, someone starts doing this to you. And uh, who can then make the subject do whatever the operator wishes? Yes, yeah, so when I was reading this, I was thinking of all the movies I've watched and wondering whether it was mesmerism or was it some other, something else. Anyways, so it continues where it says, uh, an interesting consequence of replacing uh, a subject's uh, fluid by that of the operator is that a stimulus applied on the operator may appear to be felt on the subject, right? So uh, they, they go on to talk about uh, an example here, right? So it can be vice versa as well, a stimulus by the op operator on the subject or the subject on the operator, both ways it goes. And so the example given is with reference to the arm, right? Uh, the arm is mesmerized, uh, the subject's own magnetic fl fluid being replaced again by that of the operator as mentioned earlier. Then the operator's hand is pricked, right? And so what happens is there's a transmission of this to the, the the, the subject's brain and the brain feels that it is the body of the subject that is actually being pricked. So it says that um, the subject may receive the feeling, though it is the operator, which is another person who pricks himself, the subject will feel the same. Owing to the fact that the nerve, uh, please note this, owing to the fact that the nerve ether of the operator 
has been now connected to that of the subject's brain. So remember earlier we were talking about removing that etheric fluid or whatever, vital fluid or magnetic fluid. They have different names at different points. I'm going to just uh, remove the video. You remove it and then what you do is you realize that the operator can then put his energy. Now in this case, uh, it's not a part of the body that we're looking at which we're trying to heal or to operate on. Here the person is actually taking the energy out of the person's brain, putting in their own so that what happens is... Oh, you can't hear me. Can you hear me? How come? Why is that happening today? You just did a session just before this. Uh, no, it has been going on and off today. I don't know if it's just today. Sorry, can you hear us? No, we can't even see the images. Mm -hmm. of the... Should you just change to, I don't know if I lose the connection. There to make someone host and then move it. To... No, don't. Uh, yeah. Can you check how bad this bandwidth is today? No, it's not that bad. Can you guys hear us or? Can you hear us now anymore or is it, is it still breaking? Sorry, can you hear us now? Can you hear us now? I think it should be fixed. No, it's fine. We can see you guys also. There are faces visible now. So it should be fine. Okay. All right. Y'all are moving. We are moving. I'm not repeating myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what I said. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, we're still live on that, so that's good. Okay, so let's move on with that blank. We apologize for whatever happened. I'm the not sensor. sure. What did you hear me say? Could you type? Did I talk about, uh, I was talking about the arm and the, the pricking, which kind of affects the person. Did you hear that? What? They're just saying no so that we just say it all over again. <laughs> I've been speaking for 20 minutes. I'm not speaking anymore. Ah, okay, you can speak about it. All right. So what we were talking about, oh my God, where did I stop? You didn't hear all that Shaolin stuff, the butterfly and all that stuff? You did, right? Okay, so we're okay. Okay, so you have so the back. It's just me. Yeah. Okay, so let me go back. And the Masachoa punching and the stuff. Yeah. So it's good. So we are talking about the mesmeric process. Did I start with that? Did you hear that? Right, where, where, where I was saying that uh, the extent of driving the subject's magnetic fluid out of the brain. You remember that? Okay, we're going back to that. Okay, fine. <laughs> and then the replacing it by the operator. Now, when this happens, the operator has literally control over the subject, uh, which means that the subject has no control over their body. And so if the operator says, move and do this, they will move and do this. Right? If you say, go and hug someone, they will just go hug someone. And I think something like that we watch when we watch hypnotic, uh, those series, right? Anyway, so to move on, an interesting consequence. But they can't move their leg, right? There's no prana in there. It's it's like a they're not talking limb. about the leg. The How leg do is you over. hug anyone? No, they just moved it from the brain, Ahmed. There's nothing to do with the leg. Then Where the whole arm is then, then the brain. No, that arm is coming next. <laughs> Hello, relax. I'll just take it from here. No, you're <laughs> no. talking about tricking and all that. Tricking okay. is next. Okay, okay. You told okay. me to repeat. Okay, okay. Sorry about that. He's just confused. Okay, so coming back. So they talk about how replacing of this um, magnetic fluid, they call it the vital fluid, they call it magnetic fluid, uh, they call it different names. So removing this from the subject and replacing it with that of the operator has some interesting effects, right? Now, the, the thing that they mention here, it, it, it is that the response can affect both, right? The subject out there and the operator, or when the subject does something, it can affect the operator. So there's like a two-way communication happening there. So what they're talking about here is when the operator who's done this, right? They've exchanged this energy. If he pricks his own hand, the operator pricks his own hand because of the so-called nerve etheric connection, right? Between the operator and the subject, the subject can actually feel that prick. And so that's a little strange, but because of this, it's like, you know, an extended uh, connection 
and obviously that person can hear whatever you do remember in the old days when we had those telephones you attach one more piece and then you take it to the next room or to the next floor so you can still listen to the same conversation someone else is having so it's like that you have an extension and that person can feel and so they say the subject therefore receives the message from the operator nerve ether uh, supposes it to have come from his own nerve ether or from his own brain, giving him instructions. And so he thinks he's either feeling pain or he's following certain instructions. And so uh, responds accordingly. This phenomena is usually known as magnetic sympathy. And many cases may be read in that um, there's a lot of literature written on the subject. Yeah. So for me, it really honestly reminds me of these uh, big shows where the hypnotist will tell the person, you do this, move, and the person is surprised that they can actually follow instructions like that. Probably got to do with this. All right, I'm going to do one more paragraph and then hand it over to Amit. It is not essential to make, um, in this case, remember the passes we were talking about where you would do it over the entire body or a local area. So they're saying, uh, it is not essential to make passes with the hands in order to mesmerize. However, the person uh, who is doing this, the operator might use this, right, to make um, his imagination clearer or more effective. However, there are many of them who can do this purely through will without moving any part of their body, including their hands over their patient. Purely through will, they can transfer this energy and then get the person to do their bidding. It's a bit scary, yeah? <laughs> Don't want people doing this to you. <laughs> All right. So um, that's the end of uh, that part, and I'll hand it over to Amit. Sounds like what those vampires used to do in these movies. <laughs> vampires. <laughs> right. It doesn't happen only at night, Amit. No, I'm just <laughs> No, I know. I'm just All this talk to... of fluids and magnetic <laughs> and stimuluses. All right. Um, okay, look. Gitanjali, are there any formal schools where this is taught? <laughs> if you can explain to me what they're teaching here, uh, I would really, you know, <laughs> because I have just like... I, I, look, there are certain uh, things in this, but w w it, it's not possible to talk about it here. Uh, but... Um, <laughs> but let me just drop a few lines um, you know and if there is a school Gitanjali I'm not coming in touch with you <laughs> never know what she's going to make me do look, just, just joking see some of the stuff it's really not clear um, you see the thing with, the, with this chapter is they're using a lot of old words right when they talk of you know quarter of a century they're talking about quarter of a century in 1925 not not no, what not three quarters three of a century. Three quarters. Three like quarters of a century. Years, from 1925, not from 2020. <laughs> so it's like a long time back. This was done in 1700s. 1750. No toilets were there in those days. So <laughs> you know, just to give you an idea of the technological advances. So toilets you are know, there. this this technology is quite uh, dated. All right. So, but it is interesting to understand uh, newer techniques, all right, which are much safer and where you can get much less contaminated because if my vital fluids are being moved around in another person and then it comes and back, they're continuously linked to me. No, honestly speaking, there is a big danger of contamination. Later on the, in the chapter, they talk about how the healer can contaminate the patient, but definitely the patient will definitely contaminate the healer as well. If your fluids are attached to the fluids of the other person continuously like this, <laughs> the way they're uh, describing, no uh, uh, ether. Vital, no ether. Uh, a magnetic fluid, not, not the other fluid. Magnetic they're also, <laughs> no, just, you know, there also you can get disease, you know. So the same way. Coronavirus. You, you can get much more than coronavirus. <laughs> Uh, oh, sorry. Anyway, um, now, um, when they're saying, for example, just to give you an idea, the mesmeric uh, process uh, the, uh, may be pushed further to the extent of driving out the subject's own magnetic fluid from the brain and replacing it by that of the operator. Driving out where? Like you keep it somewhere? <laughs> or you throw it? And you put yours there? Then where, what happens to yours? It's empty there. I don't know what they're talking about. You see, if, if you think about it, it's not clear. There, it's, 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 it's veiled, for example, right? You want to drive out a fluid from someone's brain or magnetic fluid or energy from here. Where, where are you going to put this? Are, are, you, are you permanently taking and throwing it away? Or are you like 
driving out and like, okay, I just keep it here for some time and, you know, work on you and then I'll just move it back here, you know, something like that. You know, it's like how you lift a couple of books away from the way that you work and then you put the stuff back. Uh, what are they talking, uh, you know, what are they talking about? And then when my fluid goes there, what fluid from where? What fluid of mine is going there? From my hand? from what part of my body, what, what energy is going there, you know? And, you know, so it's not, it's not very clear. Uh, in this case, the subject entirely loses control of his own body and control. Why does the subject lose control of his body when fluid is removed? And why do you get control? So here, it's talking about what we call a psychic link. And this has, um, I, 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 anyway. So, so, so Gitanjali, we don't know if there's really schools like this. Uh, we're talking about we're almost 200 years later, uh, whether schools actually continue to teach mesmerism. I'm not too sure. Hypnotism, yes. Uh, so you don't have to worry. I'm just saying, just listening to this, even. Uh, Look, I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm just saying that you know we need to really experiment with this, and I don't see a point because, for example, thus, for example, suppose an arm has been mesmerized, the subject's own mind, blah 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 blah. Uh, so basically, you prick uh, the operator's hand, the healer's hand, and the patient feels it. Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to do that? I don't understand. Like, okay, you're the healer. Ah! <laughs> you're not behaving. I'll beat you. Maybe it's good for the kids. Yes. <laughs> You know, you want to discipline. <laughs> like, I didn't touch the kid, I touched myself. The kid got it's the just an example to tell you that both get affected. Yeah, but I, I have no idea what, 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 what would be the reason for the healer to, uh, for the patient to experience the physical effect on the healer. I, 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 I'm not understanding Maybe the Maybe it's got to do with other things that they might do with that, right? So say, for example, the patient is someone who has a problem with certain things. Uh, so if you are able to then control and get them to do that, to make them healthier, and I'm talking okay. about the reference. So to here, see, they're talking about physical. So maybe when you emotionally and mentally have an effect that goes into that person as well. I don't know. All right. Or something like that. Okay. Now, look, there are two principles. First of all, this is got to do with psychic link. This is got to do with uh, psychic self-defense where we are doing all sorts of stuff. Yes, voodoo we'll stuff. Yes, Susan, do that, to, that, right? do that if you're um, doing the session with Amit later tomorrow. What? <laughs> Oh, that's, that's my natural tendency to talk like that. I'm not going to do understand my this. Okay, so um, if the operators, okay, now there are two things, okay? Number one, what they're talking about the pain, yes, we have seen this done. Uh, uh, you know, you can just decree that certain amount of pain comes to the person, all right? Uh, I, I, I joked about it. For those of you who, I think some are from Kolkata, you remember, I, or from the healer sessions, I joked about um the the scientist in italy and the pregnant woman delivering the one that must choice a joke about okay anyway we won't give that joke on uh recorded it's a pg-13 joke <laughs> so pg-15 okay okay so um so so that you can to a certain extent maybe you know uh, do that you can divert some of the pain it's a diversionary technique all right, basically, you divert something somewhere else, okay? Number two, there is a technique called, uh, and we won't go into it, Master Cho was experimenting one time with a technique called healing by proxy, healing by proxy. So he scanned someone, and then the person had a chakral state, and then the person proxied for another patient, and the whole chakral state changed to that person. <laughs> and then healing was done on this person, but healing is actually done to that the other one. I was a proxy once. Oh, really? Yeah. He, uh, this was in Chennai and he suddenly made me sit and he said, Sumi, sit down uh, and you be receptive for, and he gave me the name of this person in Kolkata. This, the healing is for her. And I had no clue what I'm supposed to. I said, yes, master. I'm receptive. He's like, are you receiving the energy or you're sending it to us? <laughs> I said, I, I, I must, I don't know. I'm just saying, you said to be receptive, no, so no, I'm receptive. The healer, but the, he meant to yeah. be receptive for that person. If right? you don't create the psychic link, then I, you'll get the energy. <laughs> so you'll hog it. Yeah. <laughs> so the so proxy like, has to Okay, be. so then I constantly try to remember the person's name. So hopefully with that, I, I have, you know, just like we do distant healing. So I was like, okay, visualize that. Send so you the person. The energy would go. So um, it, it, it is interesting. You, you can be a medium. Uh, through which healing could be done for someone else. So the only time he's done it, 
and and I I thought it was interesting, but interestingly, I didn't ask him any questions at that point. I did, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, okay. we'll not talk about it. So right. um, it's not essential to make passes with the hands in it's order to mesmerize. The only use of the hands is to concentrate the fluid. Blah blah blah. Look, uh, if you're not using a hand, this is something like what they call visual and instructive healing again. But the danger with this is if you are not proficient, like they're saying, uh, you would probably use your own energy or you will start energizing with your eyes or you will start uh, getting really contaminated uh, with the energy. Okay, so this is quite, quite dangerous, right? Um, and you can continue soon. Let's finish this <laughs> chapter. I don't think really Okay, just to give you an idea. Okay, uh, how confusing this is uh, because they're using, just replace the word with energy and with healing, okay, wherever it feels uh, convenient. I've spoken about this, I've spoken about this, uh, okay, uh, magnetism, and now we will speak about mesmerism. According to Master Choa, the use of inconnect terminology has made the study and understanding of magnetic healing very confusing. That is why when the theosophist transferred energy to a glass of water, which comes to the later part of the chapter, uh, or an object, they use the term to magnetize or to magnetize the object. Makes no sense. And also, uh, it, it's there also in esoteric healing, Alice Bailey, the terms magnetic healing and radio healing were used, but you have to understand that these terms were formulated by Alice Bailey and not by her spiritual teacher. It was stated by Alice Bailey herself that her choice of words in writing books was left to her discretion. So in this case, uh, because of the use of terms, the development of the healing art into a science is very difficult. Like if you read this as it is, you don't know what it is. It just sounds fascinating, but you have no idea. Uh, I mean, it doesn't give you an idea that, look, you need to, you're removing, removing vital fluid. You need to clean, to put in vital fluid. You need to energize. That's the principle behind healing. And you, you have to have the principle of contamination. You have to use other uh, uh, external energy. So all these newer techniques were, or all these techniques were not uh, easily discerned through explanations before. And that's why if you read Alice Billy's book, uh, for a few pages, you know, although there's priceless teachings in there, uh, really, really priceless hints, um, it, it just expanded. The whole book can be made in like, half the size sometimes right um that's it anyway so if you read the book origins of modern pranic healing and arhat yoga uh, i did not take the uh, i did not take the uh, quotes but master Chua talks about mesmerism also right I, I put those quotes about the doctor and all that yeah he talks about mesmerizing for him it's the same thing mesmerization magnetic healing faith healing it's all the same it's just healing with energy um, you know, one of the things I realized from Master Cho's book is when he talks about being a healer, you already know that it works in a certain way. But uh, sometimes to put that in simple language, to help someone else understand how it goes from step A, B, C is, is really difficult. And that's why he says when he initially wrote even the, even the book that he had written, he says people didn't understand. You know, ancient science and art of pranic healing. They're like, "What are you writing? It doesn't make sense." Some people still yeah. don't understand. Properly. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, we're still reading it and making sense of it. So, uh, so you know, uh, for us to then bring that knowledge uh, down to the level that a layman can understand actually requires a lot more work, right? I remember we had this um, researcher in all India, and when she would do the pranic healing researcher. She would make this presentation about uh, the work she did. It's all in scientific language. And all of us are like, huh? Uh, yeah. None of us understood what she was yeah, saying. Master you know? would come from India to the States. And then he'd be like, I was hearing her talk. And she was going on and on. I was like, Master Cho was like, I was thinking, what is that? What did she think? <laughs> right? So I'm sure the scientific, you know, field because of... Because she would use all medical terms and uh, scientific... Yes. And, and the terms. jargon used was something that none of us so understood. And we were like, some impressive, but <laughs> no, it wasn't impressive. Also, but sorry, no offense to the person. So, you know, it's very important to bring that level of understanding to a point where the, the common man can understand. And I think that's what Master Cho did beautifully, of course, with several uh, trials and errors. And but in the end, what came out is amazing. And so, I think the same thing applies here. So, so maybe the people who are, who are talking about this and who've written these various. Um, thesis and other things that have all been put into this book probably understood what they're talking about right but for them to tell us like he says you know the the aspect of contamination you can't just take you know magnetic fluid and just leave it there hanging in in the air floating around 
So those things they probably knew what to do, but they haven't mentioned they it here. It hasn't been so put it's in very right. incomplete. You know, you understand A, B, and then there's suddenly C, D is left out, and you've already gone to vice uh, it. So we're like, what happened in between? We don't know. Right? Okay. So let so me I move on. Enough. We should just take the. Just, there are changes. no questions really. Yeah, someone's raising their hand. Okay. So All right. <sighs> okay, uh, Virinder, your your question. I, I think we'll stop for now. No matter what we do, we can only finish okay, two and a half pages. This paragraph on about the. We still have to. Um, no, it's okay. It's separate because then it goes into the rest. Okay, done. So uh, go ahead. You have a question. Yeah. Uh, actually, you were saying that uh, the operator and the uh, patient okay. are linked. So if something has been done to the operator, it is going to affect the patient and vice versa. Is it? No, not vice versa. No, no, it says here. Oh, my but I would presume it's vice versa. <laughs> so. One second. It's written because what the part of that has been already mesmerized, no, means that energy or the fluid is removed from the patient's body. So he can't feel it. All right. So it has to be from the operator to the patient and not otherwise. So that is. No, no, no. One second. It's it's saying it, that it will come as if it is done to him. Okay, Virendra, hold on. So it like says that. an inter interesting consequence of replacing a subject magnetic fluid by that of the operator is not that, drawing out. Yeah, yeah. is is um, is that a stimulus applied to the operator may appear to be felt by the subject, or on the other hand, a stimulus stimulus applied to the subject may be felt by the operator. Right. So when someone does something to the subject, your subject, where you you've changed this, uh, you've you've replaced this energy. When something happens to your subject, you can also feel it. Do you understand? So that's what they're talking about. So when a stimulus is applied on the subject, may also be felt by the operator. And obviously, when the operator does something, it will definitely be felt by the subject. Yeah, it's not that there's nothing there. It's the operator's vital fluid or magnetic fluid is there. Yeah, because of that, uh, the nerve ether connecting the subject to, to him. So when something happens to the body of the subject, he can also feel it. Mm. I've yeah. seen it in some Hindi movies where, you know, <laughs> something happens to the sun and to the other person. And then, I've seen that. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, that is some other mesmerism. Just joking. <laughs> Look, we have to study all aspects, right? Because that is a form of dead mesmerism. <laughs> That happens even especially if the you know the siblings and you know someone falls down or the lover and you know happened to him. I'm sure it is the hand, I can feel it in my arm. All right. Thank you. You never know where people get inspiration from, huh? Okay. You mean the old Hindi movies? Yeah. Okay. Twins can actually feel something. Yeah, maybe that's this is what we talk about. They're talking about here psychic link, uh, and the psychic link is almost physicalized etheric. And now they have not explained the whole purpose of this except for in forms of anesthetic for surgeries and uh, healing. Where for a certain part where oh, okay, you're talking about the operation part. No, okay. I think they're not explaining it for healing at all. I mean, they just explain not that yet. you can prick the. <laughs> The operator, um. <laughs> but I don't see any healing happening here. So yes. there's a lot to know. So it's a good introduction, uh, and I'm not so interested unless someone wants to explain it to me. I'm not interested in researching it. Oh, um, Susan, so you were volunteer? You were a volunteer in one of these shows? <laughs> ah, <laughs> okay. I'm glad you're back with us, though. <laughs> okay. So I think uh, more or less we're going to look at. Uh, is anybody's question not answered because? In between, they were all yes, no, yes, no, and then we lost you because um, the thing went blank, right? So the earlier chats have all disappeared. So if See, anybody is missing a, an answer, sounds like witchcraft ask. stuff. See, witchcraft or no craft, anything can become witchcraft if you misuse the teaching, right? <laughs> so if you know about the concept of light whitish orange, and you start putting in the heart, in the eyes, and in the spleen, then I mean, I'm not supposed. To. In and places where it should not go. And a certain chakra which shouldn't be uh, energized, yeah. right? Over. So over then the you're, so it you're damaging. Harm. So let's not get stuck with the words, you know, how, because then it, based on our culture, it's like, ah, it's just 
techniques that can be misused. Uh, if this misuse is called witchcraft, I guess. Okay, now we're not too sure which ether this, this particular author is referring to. I'm talking about the text that is there. Because this remember, uh, Arthur school, Powell yeah. said, says there are many people who he's just compiled all these writings and put it together. So in reference to that book, you'll have to go back and look and see if he has mentioned other ethers. Here it's just a nerve ether, right? Because we're talking about uh, the whole concept of the nervous, uh, comp the nervous, um, what are they, what are they, what's the word he used in the beginning of the chapter? The nervous, so they basically don't with the nerve, and remember they say the nerve in the eye. If you look at that part of the text, it talks about, so basically it's nervous the nerve, paralysis. and so the nerve, yeah, nervous paralysis. So we're basically talking about the nerve. So probably why he's using nerve ether for the transfer of the etheric, yeah, purely the nerve aspect. Remember, it's required for the nervous system. Yeah. And we spoke about this in the earlier chapters, uh, okay. how that gradually develops. Okay, shall we? Um, oh, okay. Yes, so Bhagya, that will depend on that uh, person's context. So we'll have to understand it from that book and we'll have to read uh, the entire uh, book or wh whatever snippets are there to understand that clearly. Yeah. So I think more or less we've answered everybody's question. Mm. Hypnotism, they will be asked to live. Maybe that's another type of hypnotism because recently there have been newer types of hypnotism. Yeah, hypnotism and uh, mesmerism are different. I explained that yes, uh, last session. All right, shall we? Yeah, so we're going to talk about, I think you said this chapter will talk again about the difference, right? Yeah. How it's then uh, split. No, no, about why they can feel and not feel. They, they don't talk about it, but I put it for, from Madame Blavatsky's quote. Yeah. Mm. So if you missed last session, just go to the quote that Amit shared that has a, uh, has a clearer understanding of this rather than only the book here. Yeah. Okay. We're ending literally on time. So <laughs> let's close our eyes, connect unto the palate, to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chua Kotswilat Maha Guruji Mela, to all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, angels and beings of communication, the internet and the respective Wi-Fi, thank you for still sustaining it all through. To all the great beings of knowledge, light and wisdom, to the great teachers and masters of theosophy, thank you for your great, great blessings, for all the knowledge and wisdom given to us, for, the, for greater clarity and understanding of these amazing concepts. Help us to assimilate this and use it to become better instruments to do your work. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Thank you, everybody. Atma namaste. And we'll see you tomorrow morning. Yeah. I think most Hi. of you are going to be there for, for yeah, tomorrow will be Arhatik Dhyan. If yeah? you're awake. If you're awake. You know, you better be awake. Come, come join us. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>